Dear Father, I stand today just wanting to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Somebody's going to need you, Lord. Somebody's going to need a friend. Well, I stop by to let you know that I know somebody that'll stick closer than a mother, somebody that'll stick closer than even a father. Well, friend, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I know Jesus will never. guest today. You know all my guests are VIP, okay? So I have another VIP guest here today. And you guys, you know I'm starting to show like I always do. I want to thank the RMC um, Studios, RMC, and I want to thank Roscoe Chicken and Waffle. I want to thank Johnny Morris, Kino. I want to thank everybody that make it happen behind the scenes. And I got to thank God because without God, none of this is possible anyway, right? And I, I want to thank my tech guy back there, Kevin. I want to thank my guest, Vanessa. She she came on, and, you know, she have a really awesome, awesome story, you guys. You guys going to be really, really blessed today. You guys going to have some inspiration today. Hopefully, you could take something away from this show that, you know, could help you or somebody that you know. And so we're going to get right into the show. Um, I just want to thank our leaders that make all of this possible, that had the vision for the show. And we have many other shows here. So, you know, check us out at rmconair.com. Is it rmc, Kevin? Oh, still? Yeah, rmconair.com. Check us out, you guys. We have a lot of shows. And um, we can get started. Okay, so the next thing you can introduce yourself. And, you know, you could start from, you know, because you said that you had, it was eight of you guys in the family, right? 
Um, yes, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Vanessa Bluford Wells, and um, I'm just going to share a little bit of, of my testimony, my life with you all. Um, and hopefully that someone, even if it's just one person, could feel empowered, feel that they can make it, know that God can, and he will fulfill promises. All right. Um, for me, I, my mother is from Guyana. She's from South America, not Ghana, from Guyana. And my dad is African-American. And my, I have two sisters and a brother with my mother that she had from a previous marriage. And my father had a, a total of, of eight kids, including myself, um, with, different, with different women, his first wife, and then his other wife that he had um, married later on um, in life. And um, what I will say, um, I might offend some, but this is my story, and this is the way that I feel, I'm and right. I'm gonna speak the truth. So right. according to the things that I gone to when I once I was born, I was sent to South America and I lived there till I was five years old. While I was overseas, um, I almost died. I had worms very badly. Um, I didn't get a chance to be nurtured by my mother because I was born in the U.S., but she didn't have any family here to take care of me. So she felt more comfortable to send me back home to her mom and with my siblings, and that's where um, I stayed. And in that time, um, I, I began sucking my thumb. That became one of my habits. And once I came back here to the U.S., I had to get bonded with my mom. I had to learn my father. And some of the things that I learned from my father was keeping his secrets. Wow. Um, I learned how to keep secrets at a very, very, very early age in life. Mm -hmm. um, my father led a double lifestyle. Okay. He had two families, um, wow. really three, but mainly two families. He would be with us at certain times in the day, and then he would go and be with the other side of the family um, at certain times as well. He wow. split himself up. and But what that happened to me was caused me to be abused. Um, I used to get whoopings and beatings. Um, and it also taught me some very bad characteristics in my life that wow. is that will be with me later on in life. Um, and those things didn't help me very much. Wow. But in the meantime of that, um, you know, I guess it was because, you know, maybe I look like both of them, but maybe because of, of the man that hurted my mother so badly, the man that um, betrayed her, the man that was constantly cheating on her, mm -hmm. and I glorified him. Yeah. It was as though that he was my God. Like, I worshiped the ground that my father walked on. Right. I adored him um, to a great multitude. Yeah, and you say you look like your dad, too. That's another reason yeah, why. Yeah, I, I, I looked like my I looked like my dad. I looked like both of them, but I mainly resembled my dad. And oftentimes I would hear from the time of being six, seven years old, I wish you were never born. You're just like your father. You'll never be anything in life. I, you know, I damned the day and cursed the hour I ever made you, um, you know. And then it was times where she would talk to my dad as though I wasn't sitting there. You can have her. You can take her. Like if I was nothing or I didn't mean anything to, to my mother at the time. But I didn't understand, you know, when you're hurt, hurt people hurt people. Talk about it. And I did not understand. I took it personal. But then anger and rage began to develop inside of me. Um... I began to be very resentful towards my mother, uh -huh. and then um, I would allow the things that my father would deposit and say to me to those seeds of, of discord were so strong embedded in my mind and in my spirit uh -huh. that I totally grew apart from my mother completely. Wow. And um, I was rebellious. I was angry. I didn't understand why. Um, you know, I was hit all the time. I didn't understand what I would have done to be hurt. Sometimes I would go to school and the teacher would ask me, how did I get the bruise? And I would lie. And I learned how to lie because I was lying for my father. So lying came first nature for me. Wow. Um, to cover up their sin, to cover up their mishaps. So 
Because you didn't want to be separated from your mom. So, no. Yeah, so that's why you were kind of like telling the... Because if you would have told them that it was your mom, then, you know, they probably would have took you. But being young, I didn't understand the repercussions of it. I, right. I, yeah, like I, like I was saying, like my dad was starting to teach me, you know, to cover up for them. Right, so you then you just knew to cover up for your mom too. Yeah, she didn't even do that. she was abusing exactly. you, you still loved her. Exactly. Wow. And I think even for children... Even when children are abused, they still love that parent. They do. They still, right? they still desire that parent. They still want that parent. They want to be loved. They want they, to be loved. They want to be nurtured. They want to feel appreciated. And yeah. I got the love that I needed from my father, but you know when he was around. Right. So the abuse happened when he wasn't around. Wow. So, so she knew when he was around not to touch me, not to say those things to me, you know, because it would have been a different story. So then I became very fearful when he wasn't around. Wow. You know, I became scared and um, I, I was um, withdrawn. And then by her being from another country and yeah. different things like that, I wasn't allowed to um, go outside. Plus she was seven day Adventist. I wasn't allowed to go outside. I couldn't have friends. I couldn't play. And um, I, I lived a very sheltered life. Yeah. And so one day as time progressed and time went on, um, I, we, my, we moved every, all the friends that I did know that I did have, uh -huh. um, I left them behind and we had moved. We lived in LA at the time and we moved to Inglewood. And once we moved to Inglewood, um, my father wasn't coming with us. Oh. And that was a very devastating time in my life because I knew the abuse was going to happen. And I remember spending a lot of times alone by myself because my mother was a workaholic. And on her days off, it was though I was hated, you know, just because. And so, you know, it was a very devastating time for me to not have my father in my life. and. Um, there was a guy that was next door uh -huh. and, you know, he would, he was like my friend, right. you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, being that I did not have that male companion, which was my father anymore, uh -huh. I had taken on to him, but then it became, um, to the place as, you know, sex, uh -huh. you know, um, if you, if you like me, if you like me being your friend, you'll do this with me, you'll do that with me. And then I, I wasn't ready to have sex at the time, but I wanted that companionship. Right. Because I wanted, I, that, love I wanted that void. That void of love and companionship. That void. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, and I, I went through with it. I, I, I had sex. It was three and a half minutes long, my very first time, and I became tw pregnant at 12 years old. Wow. I had my daughter when I was 13. Um, and that alone, back in 1991, it wasn't very normal for a seventh grader to become pregnant. A matter of fact, you couldn't even go to school with the regular kids because it was like a distraction to the students. Yeah. So I had to leave the school that I was going to, go to a pregnant school, mm -hmm. and it was just very um, trying. I remember Tupac's song was out, Brenda's having a baby, and I would be getting on the school bus and kids would tease me and taunt me and rap the song to me and you know just it, my self-esteem was very very low at the time wow. and along with that remember i was telling you how um i learned to lie at a very right. young age right. and so i didn't find out i was pregnant with my daughter until i was about four months pregnant mm -hmm. i hid it from my mother um, i told my father but you know, as time progressed, it was, you know, out of his control. He yeah. needed to tell someone. And so um, when my mother asked me who the father of my baby was, I lied and told her I was raped. Because... Oh, um, so you wouldn't get in trouble. So I wouldn't get in trouble to have willfully had had sex. Right, right. The other flip side to that is that the guy next door was 23 years old. And he was going to be, a matter of fact, the day I found out I was pregnant, he turned 24. Really? Yes. So. So to cover so him up. Cover, so you learn how to cover up for everybody. Yes. And it's actually called people pleasing. Exactly. Exactly. I learned to 
keep people happy and please people. So when did you meet your husband, your husband that you met? I met my husband later on. Um, that was, that would be like 19, uh, 1995, I met my husband. And how were you? At the time. I was 17 at the time. Okay. But before I met my husband, um, after I had my daughter, um, I became very promiscuous. Um, I was sleeping with all type of guys. I was using guys as pawns, and I was, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, um, and I would use them to get whatever it is that I needed at the time. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a pimp, but it's still a form of hoeing, regardless of what. Um, and so, you know, I, whatever it was that I needed, I mean, I had a different guy for whatever, whether it was conversation, mm -hmm. um, to buy me something, to take me out to eat, to be seen in public with, right. um, whatever it was that I needed, I always had men. Then I was drinking on a constant basis. I was always drunk. I started smoking weed and school wasn't even my focus at the time. So, um, I became into a place to where, um... I wasn't reachable. Wow. Um, I remember getting raped twice, um, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, or allowing the wrong person to come in into right. into into my space that shouldn't have been there. But those were the decisions that I had made. Wow. And so um, one day I came home drunk. I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. I came home drunk, and my mother didn't go to work that particular day. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess it was enough, and my mother had assaulted me. She had every right to. Um, you know, she really did. But then I was in different type of programs because I had the baby, you know, so young. Yeah, yeah. And so the bruise was there, and they asked me, like, what happened. And, um, I, you know, I just told them, like, my mom hit me. Yeah. And before I knew it, Children's Services was at the house, and there was reports made every time. Every time I would run away all the time. So every time I ran away, my mother would call the police department and have to make a police report. And so all that stuff was documented by the time um, Children's Services was there. And so then the truth had to come out about, you know, um, the, you know, drinking all the time and all the yeah. different things that was going on with me. And um, so they basically said, you know, the best thing we think should happen now is that you go to a group home, take parenting classes so you could be a better parent. Um, so when you went to the group home, was your daughter able to go with yes. you? Yes. Okay. And you said you It was, was called Florence, Florence Crittenton Center in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And your daughter was able to go with you. So you guys were there for three years, you said? We were there together for three years. Wow, that's a, that's a long yes. time. But did it really help you? Um, yes, it did. At okay. first it didn't. Um, one of the things that went on with me is that um, I, I always battled suicide. I think the very first time that I battled suicide was when I was eight years old. I tried to commit suicide. And then the next wow. time um, I really contemplated suicide, I was about 14 years old. And that time I was thinking mm -hmm. about killing me and my daughter. Really? Because I didn't feel that we were loved, we were wanted. Um, I wanted her, but if I was to die, I didn't want her to be left alone with the people that had done me the way that they had done me. Wow. So um, that was something that I would think about and I would cry and I would just look at her and she actually motivated me to live. Yeah. She motivated me to change. Mm -hmm. She motivated me to survive. Yeah. And I took all of the negative energy of all the things that I felt to live for her, to want to be better for her. Wow. And because um, I even tried the gang banging thing, that didn't really work out. I think I gang banged for three weeks. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> um, say for three weeks. Yeah, right? it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it didn't really work out, That's you know. Good. Because when I decided to gang bang, immediate, I went into the group home immediately. Oh, see, that was God saving your life. I so I really couldn't bang on the streets. God wouldn't even let me. So that didn't work out for me. Wow. Um, I tried to dress like a boy. At, in the nineties, dressing like a boy was normal, but God even began to change the way that I dressed. And why were you trying to dress like a boy? There was, I think, it was just a trend in the nineties. 
Okay. You know, just, okay. you know. So it wasn't like you wanted no. to protect yourself, nothing like it no. was just like, okay. But I used to dress my daughter like a boy, too. People thought that she was a boy. We used to dress alike. Really? Mm hmm. Wow, that's, that's pretty deep. So we would have matching khakis and t shirts and tennis shoes, ponytails. It, at that time, but again, I was 13, 14 years old. I had no idea how to be a mother. I didn't wow. know what that consisted of. And but you my mother, love your daughter, though. I loved my daughter. Yeah, absolutely. I adored my daughter. Yeah. So what's the, can I can I ask you this though? Um, what stopped you um, from? the suicides what stopped you from doing it I know it was God ultimately but in, as you can remember what stopped you at 14 at 14 I, I could not imagine hurting her awesome I couldn't imagine hurting that's, her that's good that was good thing. despite the pain because pain will make you become numb and when yeah. you become numb you don't think logically anymore right you want to ease the pain you want to ease the feeling. Um, and it was because of her why I didn't kill us. It was because of her what made me become who I am today at this moment to sit in this chair. Awesome. So at eight years old, because that's very young mm -hmm. to even think about something like that. So at eight years old, what what was the, I mean, what was the thing that stopped you then? I, I It was God, honestly, because I was... I would go in a medicine cabinet and just drink medicine. Really? I would just drink the medicine, um, large quantities. And at eight, I really didn't understand. I just knew that um, I didn't want, I wasn't loved. I wasn't wanted. And no one would miss me if I was gone. And that's the way I thought it at eight years old. Wow. So fast forwarding a little bit to the time when you were like, got, got married. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you guys come together, and how did that happen? Um, I met while I was while I was in the group home. I met my um, best friend Tammy, mm -hmm. and um, that's she's she's my heart. And awesome. um, she was having a party at the time, and when she had her, her little party, I had mm -hmm. went, mm -hmm. and my husband was there. But I didn't like my husband. Really? I, 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 At first? No, because <laughs> he was already with somebody else. And I, like I said, I had guys. He, We weren't coming to meet each other. As a matter of fact, I think I was going to go meet another guy. Right. And he was right. going to meet another girl. But mm -hmm. um, that that particular night, uh -huh. um, the way that things panned out, I helped my husband from going to jail or being hurt. Awesome. Awesome. And from that moment... We have been together. Wow. And so that was a long, because you guys are still together now. Yes. Okay, so tell our viewers how many times you guys have been married. And divorced. We have been married three times, and we have been divorced twice. Um, when I met my husband, my daughter was three years old. Okay. And she um, she was about to turn four. Uh -huh. and, um, and now my daughter is about to be 25. In October, in October. Together, 25. So 21 years we've been t we've been together. Awesome, that's a beautiful thing. And so yeah, you was telling me also um, how you guys was married and divorced three two times, married two three times, but divorced twice because you guys are still married right now. Yes. So you said in between that time, you um, you know you guys had separate that one of the separations you got remarried. Yes, and one of the separations, um, there was a time where. He was cheating, and um, things just didn't, things were not good between us, and I had had enough. Right. And um, it wasn't the first time my husband had cheated. So, but at that point, again, like I said, I had had enough, and I was ready to move on. Okay. And at the time, he was incarcerated, and I decided that I, this was a perfect time to leave him. Right. And um, I did. So I began dating, I, be, I began to go into clubs and doing things that I really shouldn't have been into because I was more grounded being the wife and the mother right. than rebelling and being free and, you know, doing you. Right. And that doing you had cost me a very, very, very valuable price. Wow. And in the process of that, um, my... I was I began working and I was assistant manager um, at a at a bookstore, uh -huh. and um, 
I met this guy, and to me, this guy was like so amazing, tall, dark, handsome, um, very, just very smart. He was a school teacher, mm -hmm. taught fourth grade for a, um, a private school. Mm -hmm. You know, suit, suit and tie, briefcase type of dude, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, then, you know, his grandfather was a pastor, a Pentecostal your pastor. Light and shining armor, you thought. Yes, yes. And so um, I just knew this man is just God sent. Right. And so, you know, start dating him. I mean, it, it was some warning signs as far as, you know, him cheating, things like that, but right. it wasn't anything that made me like, you know, this is not the one for me. Right. So three years, we, we venture off into this relationship, the both of us, uh -huh. and um, but things for me started to go left, and the, our relationship began to, to, it just, the relationship wasn't good. Arguments, um, tension between us, it just wasn't good. Right. And I just felt like, okay, well, maybe we need to get married because my stuff started drying up. Mm -hmm. Things for me started going left. All, all right. kind of bad stuff started happening to me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the solution, so we was, were, you know, because we were married, we wasn't married. Right. You know, we want to do right. So we got married. Wow. So three weeks into me being married to this guy, uh -huh. um, I was presented an opportunity, something like I'm doing now, to, you know, um, go to my old group home to be, to do, like, ins inspirational speaking type right, of thing. Right. And I did. And um, I took my oldest daughter with me. Uh -huh. In the process of doing that, um, my sister, my sister could talk you... She could talk, boy. She <laughs> she could sell you your, your own shoes back to you. She's that good. Like, so she's like, you should move back and we could do this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, things up there is not going too good. And, you know, I'm going to take you up on the offer. Right. So I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me, you know, go back and get your kids and leave everything. Okay. Materialistic things you could get, but your children are forever. Right. And I'm like, man. So I call the guy. I'm like, look, I'm about to move back to L.A. Uh -huh. um, at the time, I had moved to, to the Bay. So I was living in the Bay Area at the time. And okay. so, you know, I'm like, you could have everything. It was a four-bedroom place, fully furnished. I was like, you could have it. Um, right. You know, I know the way that I'm leaving isn't right, but I got to go. And, he, and I said, well, you're welcome to come. He was like, no, nah, I'm not going to come. I'm like, okay, cool. Right. So I go back and get my kids. And maybe three days later, is when my daughter tells me that he was molesting her. Wow. And that was a very tragic time in my life oh, um, my because I felt that I failed her. And I always had made her a promise that I was gonna protect her and um, you know, be the mother that I did, you know, that I didn't get that and all those different things. And I, I let her down. More importantly, I let myself down because she was harmed and I had no idea. Wow. There was no warning sign. There was, but I was going to school and I was working too, you know. Yeah. So I didn't see, I didn't see it coming. Wow. I didn't and see so it coming. so he was at home a lot of times. Yes. I would yeah. leave early in the morning, um, come in late in the evenings. Yeah. And so you were telling me that actually um, something happened um, more than just the molestation with your daughter and him. Yes, um, it was, once I found out, I took her, I had taken her to the doctor, mm -hmm. and um, once I took her to the doctor, I found out she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing was, is that, you know, I wasn't thinking logically, I'm like, okay, she's just going to get an abortion, we're just going to, you know, she can't have this baby, you know. But tell our viewers what your first reaction was. You told you told me that you um, that as soon as you heard the doctor say that she was pregnant. Yeah. Well, when I found out that she was pregnant, um, I needed to know how many weeks it was because I didn't think that it was anything. You know, to me, it had just happened. In my mind, it had just happened. Right. But um, I, you know, I had to take her to the hospital and different things like that. And I, I was going off on the doctors. I was ready to fight. I'm ready to kill somebody. As a matter of fact, I'm ready to kill myself. Um, and when they gave her the ultrasound, mm -hmm. my grandson was moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just moving. And he was laying on his side, like, just playing. Uh -huh. And then he 
rolled on his side, uh -huh. and it was though that we were looking at each other. I was looking at him, he was looking at me. Through her stomach. I was looking at him, he was looking at me. And when I said, oh my God, that's a real baby, he flipped back on his side and kept playing. Wow. She had no stomach. Stomach was flat as a pancake. Really? No stomach. Four, four months pregnant, no stomach. And so you said you had had a dream about this. Yeah, I had a dream maybe, um, maybe like three weeks, maybe a month prior, three mm -hmm. weeks, that I was going to have a baby. Uh -huh. I had no idea. Um, but in the dream, the man in my dream said that I was going to have a son. And I was like, no, I'm not. And we going back and forth. He said, yes, you're going to have a son. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, when when he was born and it was a boy, I just feel like God was letting me know that he was coming wow. and that he is going to be something amazing in life. Wow. He is going to be something special in life. And that's why um, he is one of the best things that has happened to our family. Awesome. Yeah. So, I, so what the devil meant for bad, God turned it, it and made God it God made it for good. Because one of the things that came out of that situation uh -huh. is, um, remember I said I was living with my sister when I, when I left, uh -huh. everything. And I did not like that situation at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. so, so, first of all, let's back up a little bit. Okay. So, I call myself leaving my husband uh -huh. um, because of what went on. And got with the other guy. So right. when that happened with my daughter, I became suicidal again. But this particular time, um, I should have succeeded because the other times um, that I had tried to commit suicide, you know, I tried to take, well, I took a lot of pills. The, uh, the next time, like I said, I was taking medicine. Uh -huh. But this time I ran into the street with oncoming, oncoming traffic. And the car, this particular car, should have hit me. It stopped at my knee, literally. It gently bumped my knee. And the peep, the guy that was driving the car, I looked in his eye, and the fear that he had in his face that he almost killed me. But I didn't care because I let my child down. I, I wasn't there to protect her. I should have been there to protect her. And then it, 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 it I, I was just talking about triggers. Mm -hmm. And you don't know when certain triggers happen in a person's life, exactly. but certain situations will come up in someone's life and it will cause you to have a trigger. And yeah. for me, I, I, it was like, my, like, like I was my daughter. Right. And when I felt like my parents weren't there when I needed them okay. and when bad things happened to me and I just felt like there was no reason for me to live because I'm not a good mother. Oh. I'm not a good parent that this could have happened and I didn't wow. see it happen. I didn't know that it happened. Um, I didn't protect her. I felt like I failed. Wow. So that was nothing but God's hand that stopped the car. Yeah, it it was it was nothing but God so many times in my life. It wow. and I didn't understand that God had a purpose for me. God had something for me to do. Um, yeah. you know, there there was a reason for everything that's gone on in my life because the enemy wanted to 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 rob my purpose and destiny. Mm -hmm. He wanted to take what God wanted for my life so that I could be jacked up and be on drugs and be in a place to where um, I didn't feel worthy enough because sometimes we need to forgive ourselves Talk about you know that. sometimes we blame ourselves and we hold ourselves um, down and accountable for so many things when God has already forgiven us and he's moved on, but yet we stay in the state of mind as not feeling worthy enough. Condemning our own selves. Exactly. And so um, my husband had came back on the scene. He was actually in another relationship with someone else. And so tell me why you said he came back? Because, because I was suicidal. And he loved you. Because that's love right there, to yeah. leave another relationship after you had left him when he was he was in he was in prison and you left him because you say you thought this guy was better the other guy you right dress suit and tie and knight in shining armor all that you thought right? right and he came back to you because he he wanted to make sure you was okay and and the kids as well and exactly. so um, and that's what he did and we we worked through it 
it wasn't I didn't handle the situation the best with my daughter being pregnant because I wasn't even in my right state of mind with the stress and the anger and the disappointment um, I, I was I, I you know I traumatized her too because we were so close but yet I was still pushing her away because I didn't know how to deal with it right you know right. people were telling me well you should give him up for adoption I'm not gonna do that Right. I don't have the heart to do that. Right. But at the same time, you were just so frustrated. I was frustrated with the whole situation. Do. But wow. m more importantly, um, I blessed God on the way that it came out because at the time when I found out um, about the situation, up north I was selling weed. Mm -hmm. I had two guns. I had a 45 and a 9. Mm -hmm. um, God waited for me to be away to find out because I would have killed him without any remorse. Right. Or who's to say that he wouldn't kill me and my kids? See? It could have went either way. And either way, it would have been bad. Either way. Either way because been, yeah, either even way though he did bad. this to my daughter, yeah. and if I killed him, I still have to go to jail for murder. Exactly. So either way, it would have been bad. So God know how to protect us. He does. He got you away from the 45. <laughs> And away from everything, so you didn't yes. have to, you know, yeah, because I definitely understand if that would have happened, you know, that you wanted to do that, you know? Well, I actually, I did plan on going back to killing. It was my plan. Um, I had a plan. I had a whole plan on how I was going to murder him or have him murdered. Wow. But it just didn't work out that way. Thank God. <laughs> Thank it God, just didn't you, work out that way. So I did today. exactly. So it, it worked out another way. I became the detective, okay. and I did all everything that I needed to do to put him in jail. Awesome. And that's what I live for. I would not rest yeah. until he was in jail. And that, that's good. That's better. That's justice. Oh yeah, I did everything that I needed to do because the police officers weren't handling the case the right. way I felt that they should. Right. And no offense to anyone, but I, I remember screaming at one of the t detectives. Uh -huh. I said, if she was white, you would be on this case. Wow. And when, when I said that, that's when I started getting the help that I need to put him behind bars. Wow. I see that. That's that's better thing because now yeah. you're free still. And now the kid, you you here to, you know, see your kids do everything. Yeah. And now she's grown. Yeah. Awesome. And... So. so one of the things that um, my grandson brought was me and my mother's relationship into a place of healing. Really? When he was born, and remember I said I lost everything. Uh -huh. yeah. I became homeless. I had nothing. I just had my kids and the couple things that we were able to get. And um, I had to leave where my sister and all that I had to leave there uh -huh. and I had to go stay with my mom uh -huh. and my mother and I began a bond well we already had started a bonding process maybe three years prior but that particular time uh -huh. was the best time ever really? because you know we were living together you know we did we were interacting you know more uh -huh. and it just was the fulfillment of everything that I wanted her to ever be. It was everything that I had desired That's a mom so to to be. That's because it had to take me to be a woman myself and make some mistakes as a mother. To understand okay. parenting doesn't come okay. with a parenting guideline book. When you're hurt, you okay. make dumb decisions. You, you react that. in ways that you shouldn't react. And so, him you know, him coming, you know, it just really brought my husband and myself back together. Wow. It brought a relationship with my mother and I and my children and my mother. And that that was 2000 and, uh, 2005. No, wow. no, he was born 2005, so 2006. And so she told me, she was like, you know, if you're going to live here, you got to be married. So that's how me and my husband got married the second time. Really? Yeah, because my mother was, you know, she didn't play that. She didn't play. So, you know, we went ahead and got married um, the second time. And then after that, um, it was October later that year, later on that year, and um, my mother had died. Oh. Suddenly. 
very suddenly from an asthma attack. A matter of fact, her and my oldest daughter had um, talked about 10 o'clock that morning, mm -hmm. and by 12 o'clock she had passed. Mm -hmm. But we did not know that she had passed, um, my other siblings and I. So my other, I have an older sister, then I have another sister, and then I have my brother, and then it's me. Right. And so my my brother was calling me and calling me, but I was getting my hair done at the time. You know, I was trying to look cute. You know. So um, I answered the phone, and he sounded very devastated. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And he was like, are you sure you don't, you're all right? I said, yeah. Come to find out, my second, the second to oldest sister had told him um, that I had, I had died in a car accident. Really? Yeah. I'm getting somewhere. Oh, wow. So, um, my my brother's trying to understand what's going on at this yeah. time. Then he asked me, you know, did you talk to mommy today? And I'm like, Brichelle talked to her earlier, mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, he said, okay, well, go lock the house up and this, that, and the other. I called the hospital. The hospital told me she was fine. Mm -hmm. All these different controversy stories was going on. Yeah. But the point that I wanted to make is the second sister uh -huh. wouldn't tell us that our, our mother had passed so that she could go get all the stuff out the house that she wanted to steal and take. Are you serious? We had no idea that she had passed. And so when they're telling me that I need to go to the hospital, identify my mother's body, mm -hmm. um, I'm so messed up. I'm not tripping because my play sister is the one that's taking me in there, you know, because she's an RN there. Uh -huh. So she took me directly to her body. I didn't have to talk to anybody. Right, right. Um, on my way out, I said, oh, let me get her stuff. I didn't think that it, the guy said, oh, your sister already came and got it. It just, my sister went that same day and got my mom's check from her job and cashed it, her final check. Wow. She um, she changed my mother's mailbox, I mean her address to a P.O. box that only she had the key to. All of this was going on before the funeral. Are you serious? Yes. She knew that our mom had passed that at 12 o'clock. We didn't know that my mother had passed till four o'clock that afternoon. Oh, People wow. in Guyana knew that my mother died before we did. But how? Because she had my mother's purse, her checkbook, and her so phone she book. she called the people and told them, but she didn't tell you guys? Yeah, so to put, to you know, to keep us off her track, she told my brother that I died in a car accident. That is so deep. Yeah. Okay, so, wow. So, um, so at the funeral, what, like? We didn't know what was going on. We had no idea. We didn't find all of this stuff out till after. After, because we were all devastated, my oldest sister, my brother, we were so devastated. We didn't see it coming. We knew she had asthma. Okay. But, but we did not, not know that. Sick enough to just. That this was, I mean, she was an LVN. I mean, just got off work, full of life, full of energy, really? water in her garden. You couldn't have told me that. So what really did happen to her? Well, that we, we still don't know because what we can say is after we started to, um, you know, clean out the house afterwards, mm -hmm. one of the neighbors, remember I told you me and my husband lived at the house. Right. And um, my husband had made friends with one of the guys or whatever on the street. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, well, when the ambulance came to get your mom, the car, which is my sister's car, was mm -hmm. in the back of the ambulance. There's, it's, we have no idea. We, there's, when I, we tried to call the police and ask them to open the case, they wouldn't open it because they have a cause of death, which is an asthma attack. Oh, wow. But my sister was somewhere present when it happened. Wow, that's really deep. So you guys had the funeral, and then um, mm -hmm. did you guys stay in the house afterwards? No. Well, we had already moved out. Me and my husband had moved out. That's why we didn't know what was going on. Okay. We had moved out from living with my mom, so we had no idea what was what was going on. If we were there, I'm quite sure that things probably wouldn't have turned out the way that they did, but that happened. And what what I would like to what I would like to say is sometimes in life 
you know, we don't understand, you know, God's purpose for us sometimes. And because of that, the enemy will constantly taunt you and talk to you and drop seeds into your mind. The problem is when those seeds get into your heart and they take root right. because you start believing those things and you start acting out on those things. Okay. And everything that I have gone through in my life, everything that I, because I'm writing a book, it should be done by the end of this year. All right. But everything that I've gone through, I'm just giving glimpses and little pieces of certain situations right now, but yeah. it was for the making. It was for the making. It was it was to develop and cultivate the person that I needed to be, the right. person that can inspire, the person that can hold up somebody else that's going through something. Yeah. And one of the other things that I... Teenagers is, like, my thing. You know, that's why I'm a okay. foster parent, and I'm going to open up a group home. Teenagers is my thing because if somebody could grab them and love them and talk about it. rip the hand of the enemy off of them, they can make it. Talk about so that that's before. my passion. However, my other passion is marriage. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about uh, my husband and uh -huh. the things that my husband and I have gone through. Right. And there was a season that um, my husband, well, first of all, I didn't understand my role as a wife because okay. I started to tear him down. Okay. You know, I don't need you, you know, type, and you feel more inferior when the head is supposed to be the head. Yeah. And at that time in my life, my husband began to cheat. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, um, I had to learn the pattern. Okay. I had to see the pattern. Why did I stay with this man okay. all these many years and all the times he's cheated? Right. I was taught to accept it. Wow. Because my father was a cheater. And you were covering up for him. I covered up for him, and my mother stayed. Wow. My mother never left. Okay, that's deep. That's and deep. one, at, at, at some point, mm -hmm. she did leave, but the damage was already done with me. The damage was already done. Wow. And because I dealt with abandonment issues. Okay. I didn't want him to abandon me either. So you accepted it. So I accepted it. Subconsciously, not even knowing. Because that comes with people pleasing. Because you always want to please your parents. You want to make people happy and right. all the time. It comes right. you, you're taught to people please at a young age. See? You just grow up with it. You talk about until that. some you get to a point to where you don't care what people feel, how they feel. You just it is what it is. See, Vanessa, I'm just sitting over here, you know, I'm sitting over here just soaking it all up because you sound like me a lot. You know, especially when it comes to the people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And then you, when you get to a point where you realize that you don't have to people please, God please, yeah, but not people please, you know. And then once you get to that point that, you know, you don't really care. It's not that you don't care, but you actually give it to God and you just let it go because it's like you're not trying to please people no more. Right. Then, now you're trying to please God. Right. And the Bible says we're not supposed to please man in the first place See? because man can never love us like God love us. Never. But it's a it's a taught behavior See? just like when when babies are born babies are not born scared of the dark they're taught to be afraid of the dark they're taught that that's bad exactly. Exactly. you taught different things and you grow up with that thinking that it's a normal when it's not normal exactly. and so I know that my husband and I we generally do love each other I mean we go way way back but yeah. there there are times in our situation that did not have to be Right. You know, right, right. Um, and this particular time when he came back. Is this the. the my, no, this is my husband, husband, not the, not the. Yeah, not, not the not school, the school teacher. teacher. The school teacher. He, uh, he, he in jail. Out. Yeah, he in jail. School teacher. That's where he need to be. Because I said I married my husband three times. Right, three times. Three, yeah. But this time awesome, I accepted him with his baby because he made a baby with somebody else. Wow. And. That's why I was saying, you know, we make emotional decisions, not thinking about the consequences behind them. Wow. We, 
it's okay, you know, when you're in a moment, mm -hmm. the flesh will have you make decisions for that moment. But that. it will change you for a lifetime. You talk about that. You for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. One decision will, can cost you your life. One decision. You One see, decision could cost you your life, and it's Bible, very quick. It's a Bible verse that speaks of something like that, is, is, and it talks about, I'm paraphrasing, but it talks about five minutes. Sometimes it could take you five minutes to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. it, it, it be, well, get angry, but sin not. Yeah. So it could take you five minutes to get in that trouble, and it could take a lifetime to get out that trouble that it took you five minutes to get into. It's very true. And so, like you said, emotional, not even thinking, just... Emotional decisions. That's that's like um, emotional eaters. They're emotional, but they they soothe their soul by eating and snacking. Exactly. Your emotions could get you into a world of trouble when you don't have God in the middle. God has to be. He got to be there because the Holy Spirit has to talk to you to guide you Ooh. to give you insight on whether you should go right or go left. But because of our flesh, mm -hmm. our flesh will have us make these decisions that's not See? good for us. See? So we need the Holy Spirit, right? It's important. It's important. It's so and important. and people also have to understand that, you know, there are d demonic forces out there that help ruin lives. Talk about it. And they find the darndest times to come in. Now, it's not like falling, like if I touch you or something and I got something on me. Right. But the enemy finds a good time when you down to come to send something your way to help you stay down. Talk about that. Because, see, he'll, take the, he'll see the wound, take the knife, and not just stick it in, but he's going to twist it. Yes, because you know he saying? wants to and make he sure. he's twisting it one way, the other way, because that's how evil and wicked and exactly. uncaring he is. He don't he care about to, nothing and nobody. He wants to make sure that you never company. reach your full potential in God. He wants company in hell. That's what he wants. And he also, he also will love the fact that you don't reach the million of people that God's put in your path for you to reach. Talk about it, because, see, if he can mess you up young... And then, like, like right now, you're on the show sharing your story. Mm -hmm. And if he could have got you way back then, you would never be here trying to inspire somebody else. Look, I've been through this, I've been through this, I've been through that. Mm -hmm. But I'm here. Exactly. Made it through, still making it through, and, 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 God, and it's because of God. Nothing but God. Nothing and but God. God placed people in your path, mm -hmm. you know, to help you on the journey. You just have to have the right discernment that that's the right person that's sent from God. Okay. Because the enemy is sending some people your way too. Right. And right. if you're in a season where you're losing some people and it's not working out, your friendships is failing, it's a reason for it. Don't that's question it. Don't chase after them, huh? Let God do what God is doing. Just move Don't forward. Those that are for you will roll with you. See? If you can't roll with me, then it's not meant to be. See? You're not for me. So what is so Vanessa, tell tell our viewers through all of this all of these things that you've been through, you've been through a lot. It's so it's a lot of layers. So tell our viewers what are you doing now? Like what cuz I know you um leave um something at your church. Or? Yeah, well, um God has changed my name. I am Prophetess Vanessa at Silent Rock Apostolic okay. Prophetic Ministries. Okay. Um okay. I, I teach the prophet I help teach prophetic class. Okay. I also am over the deliverance class, meaning that um, I help people demon busters basically. You that's what that's that. the what best way for me to even to, that's the best way for me to describe it. I believe that I was sent here on earth okay. to help people become free from the hands of the enemy. Uh, that's my job. From the hands of the enemy. Yes. I like that. So do you have a website or you haven't got that yet? No, not yet. You're, you're working I'm on I'm still it. working on all those things. Yeah, and you're working on your book. Yes. And you and your husband are doing good because he, he sings in church also. Yes, he does. He sings and you're yes. prophesying and leading classes and, you know, God is just doing. And then you're actually foster parenting yes. and you're actually helping a lot of people, you know. Yes. And you get them in there, take them to church and, you know, and just help them, right? Yes. So that's so God just turned the situation around completely, completely. Because when I met my husband, we were teenagers. I had no idea he could sing. I had no idea. I had no idea who I was. And he actually sung at my mother's funeral last year. Mm -hmm. 
He really did. He did a good. And he preached a little, too, at the funeral. He preached a little bit, and then he sung. He was like, well, let me stop preaching right now, because, you know, I ain't supposed to be preaching here. But, you know, it was awesome, though, you know? Right. And then he sung a song, and it was, like, really anointed. And I was like, it's, that was beautiful, you know? Right. And so it was beautiful, even how our families just hooked up and we met and exactly. everything like that. Exactly. And like you said, God put people in your life for a reason. He does. And a season. And sometimes it's like for a long time. It's sometimes, sometimes it's for a moment. Sometimes for a long time. Sometimes it's for a second. Yeah. You just got to make sure you know how long to have that person in that spot. Yeah, so our time is just about up. Like I said, I'm like, I'm thinking it's like 30, it's like time is almost up. So what would you leave our viewers with? Like some something inspirational right now that you could leave our viewers with? <clears throat> what I would leave our viewers with right now is God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter yes. what the enemy may throw your way, no matter what it is that you've been through, God is faithful. God can do it. There is nothing that is too hard for God. Okay. He nothing can do too it. Hard for God. And if I can make it, you can make it. Amen. If I could get through it, you could get through it. There's not too many things that people have gone through that I have not endured just because I didn't say it in the hour. Okay. But I can say that I've overcome because of God. All right. And Vanessa, thank you so much for being a thank guest. Thank you for having me. And thank you, beautiful people, for tuning in to I've Been Through It, hosted by Gail Davis. You guys come back every Monday at 4. Check out all our shows on rmconair.com. And just thank you so much. And come back every Monday at 4, okay? Thank you so much. Bless you guys. Father, I stand today just want to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Somebody's going to need you, Lord. Somebody's going to need a friend. Well, I stop by to let you know that I know somebody that'll stick closer than a mother, somebody that'll stick closer than even a father. Well, friend, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I know Jesus will never let you down. No. Whenever you need. I know